Welcome back guys, Rodrigo Fondador here with part four, video four of our part five series. So this video is gonna be about the decision to list. So you decide to list and now what? Well, you gotta call listing agents. And so this conversation is really gonna revolve around how to vet a listing agent, in my opinion. And this is really the most important part of the process of listing the house, because if you pick a good agent, after you interview them and you decide who you're going to hire, you really don't have to do much after that. And that's why there's only one step when you list a house. Choose a good listing agent. All right, so how do you choose a good listing agent? Um, well, you need to interview, I always say, three to five people. Typically, at least, you know, minimum three. I don't know if you want to interview five. I don't think it makes a huge difference. Um, and the reason you want to do this is because a lot like there's a lot of good agents out there and communication and communication style should go i mean for me it always goes a long way on deciding who to work with because you want to work with a listing agent who you trust is going to communicate with you in the way that's important to you so if you're somebody who likes to have a phone call every day make sure you choose to work with an agent who's willing to call you every day if you're more of a personality who's like I never want to hear anything about this until the house is sold. Like there's definitely going to be somebody for that's going to fit that bill. So just take the time and have those conversations. Once you've decided what your three to five agents are that you're going to talk about, the other thing is what are the questions? How do you vet them? How do you rank agent one, agent two, agent three? So I always start with reviews and experience. So like who have you worked with? What have they said about you? And how much experience do you have? Uh, in any business and in anything reviews for me go a long way. Like I want to know that what you're telling me isn't just your opinion of yourself and your work ethic, et cetera. I want to read about it, watch videos, hear about it from other people. So ask the agent, Hey, what are your reviews? Do you have video reviews? Do you have testimonials? Like, let me see this proof of how good you are. Also, make sure that they can give you a clear marketing plan. Now, what do I mean by this? You wanna make sure that they're gonna give you professional pictures, depending on your property. Maybe you might need to do aerial photography with like a drone footage, 3D pictures. Make sure that they can give you a plan on what they're gonna do, open houses, no open houses, are they sending out mail? Like get clarity on that because if you get clarity on that upfront, and this is a key point, whatever you can get them to commit to upfront in the listing presentation, then you can hold their feet to the fire during the listing process. So in that presentation, if you get them to commit to say five open houses and they've only had three open houses a month in or two months in or whatever your timeline is, you can be like, hey, you promised me five. So get clarity on that and get some commitment on what their marketing plan or what their marketing strategy is. Because I don't think this is a surprise to anybody. Putting a sign in the yard with some balloons and putting the house up on the internet just doesn't cut it anymore. You gotta have somebody who's willing to go out of their way, go that extra mile to differentiate your house from everybody else's house on the market. Kind of passionate about that a little bit, if you've noticed. Sometimes there's just too many times that houses get listed and they don't have good pictures. The listing agent doesn't answer the phone. They don't answer messages and it just doesn't make any sense. Like make sure you got somebody who's really gonna advocate for you. All right, so uh, what else is, you wanna know what sort of support team they have, if any. Some agents are gonna be part of a team and they're gonna have somebody who's gonna you know, do all the heavy lifting with you, paperwork, scheduling, that's not that agent. So that's not right or wrong, it's just gonna come down, do you wanna work with a one-man show or do you wanna work with a bigger operation? There's both good, there's amazing agents who are one-person shows and there's amazing agents who are part of teams. Just kind of, you know, get a feel for what that looks like so you can make your decision uh, and you know, have some confidence behind it. Lastly, and we're just gonna do a very short dive into this, and this is just talking about commissions. So why am I gonna talk about this? A common question that comes up with listings is negotiating commissions. My point of view is this on, on commissions and negotiating commissions is pretty simple. If you feel like you need to negotiate the commission of the agent that you're working with, 
that probably means you don't have a good agent. That means you don't have confidence in the value that they're going to deliver to you. If you feel like you need to ask for a reduced commission or negotiate the commission, my opinion is to move on and find a different agent. You want to work with an agent that you feel 100% confident and at peace with paying 6% because that means you believe in the value that they're going to deliver for you. Commissions I don't think should be negotiated if you have a good agent because commissions get broken down. Like 6% might seem like a lot, but as a reminder, 3% goes to the listing agent, 3% goes to the buyer's agent. Both agents are going to have costs. Like the listing agent probably spent a couple hundred dollars on pictures, flyers, etc. Not to mention that they've got to pay to keep the lights on. They, they've got costs too. So don't ask them to take money out of their pocket if you believe they're going to do a good job for you. And again, if you feel like they're not going to do a good job for you and that's why you're asking for a reduced commission, find a better agent and get one that you feel confident that's going to do a great job for you. All right. The other thing, uh, and this is just talking about flat fee versus traditional MLS listings. A flat fee listing is you find an agent, you pay them three, four, five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. Actually, I have no idea how much it costs, but it's a flat fee. You pay one price, and the agent puts your property up on the MLS so that all the buyers and all the agents can see it. After that point, it's pretty much the same as FISBO. So all the pros and cons that we talked about in FISBOs in the previous videos are going to apply to a flat fee listing. And then a traditional listing is, you know, the hands off experience that we've just kind of talked about and covered here. Uh, so if you have any questions about that, just reach out to us, let us know. Happy to talk you through that, but don't want to deep dive into that anymore. Good luck. Hope you find a great listing agent that you feel confident to work with. Again, as a reminder, we're here for you. Our motto here is to help you take the next best possible step. So call us if you want to brainstorm, if you need some recommendations, whatever you might need to get to that next possible, the next best possible step for you with confidence. We want to help you do that. Thank you.